Welcome to Deep Thought. Many are a part of the herd. Many are a part of the herd. And what do I mean? Now, the theme this week, I'm, I have a specific theme, which would be very apparent with uh, my third video on this channel this week. But the first part has to do with the herd. What is the herd? The herd is the majority of people. The majority of people are a herd. In fact, uh, allegedly, many in the elite, you saw, see them as cows or useless eaters. Many are move men. When I say the herd, because people move together, people, many people don't follow their own wishes. They might think they do, but really they don't. They follow what the herd has done before them. Many people wear clothing not because of what they like or their personal preferences, but it is usually in line with whatever the herd is doing, whatever the social majority is doing. They move moving on that path. You know, they'll buy, they'll spend money because this is what the herd is doing. They'll get into fads and trends and everything, not because of what they're doing, but what, no, that not because they have a particular like for it, but because of what they're doing. In fact, and I'll get into this more in uh, my video tomorrow, but many and many of the people, many in the, uh, what we might call the elite, the they's, the 1%, what they do is just move the herd. And the herd is uh, really kept encaged, is kept in the pen, so to speak, by many of the institutions. You know, we, 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 we get up there and we think, oh, okay, we're supposed to be a part of this church. We're supposed to have this type of education. Even, even in the jobs that we do, the foods that we eat. Oh, we, we, we're supposed to eat this type of food because that's what, hey, that's what everybody else around me eats. And, you know, one thing with the herd, there's like little mini herds, really. You know, you got one major herd, but then, and these are the subcultures, they still are part, of, see, you understand with the term subculture, that means it's still a part of the culture, but just a subdivision of it. Now, for it to be different, it would have to be a counterculture, just totally different, but most cultures are still a part of the major culture. But say you have a herd of, uh, say you have a herd of cows, got a hundred cows they they move along grazing and everything but you get 20 or so who break off and they just grow grazing someplace else they still a part of the herd they just they just eat in a different area so and that's most people really talk i mean and even some people who are listening to this now this is no shade this ain't to be mean but you know i do this to get people to think you doing something why are you really doing a particular act you know, when I was like still part of the herd, and I'm gonna say, yeah, I was part of the herd. You know, with some decisions I made wasn't based on just my own volition, but rather this was what the herd is doing. The herd said, hey, I should go to this type of school, I should get into this type of vocation, and boom, there I was. In fact, I don't consider myself free until I really broke from the herd when I left what I could have been doing. When I decided, that's when I started, when I decided to do something different. But that's that's a, another conversation. That gets into the third video that's coming this week. But many people are. How many people, how many people are following along behind somebody because the herd said it, the group, everybody said do it. How many people, and see, the problem with it is it wouldn't be as bad if the herd was going in a generally positive direction. But usually the herd is going in a circle. The herd is just going out there eating that grass, eating that food, and then coming back. Isn't that most of humanity? How many people are just, how many people are just, they get up, they go to work to make money so they can get food. They eat their food, they sleep, they go back and do it again. Not get any place, they own a treadmill. It's like, and they working hard. And really, if you're working for somebody, uh, even some, even if you got some businesses, you're working for somebody, that's part of the herd. Even if you got a businesses or something, you know, because actually you're feeding somebody else. Because, you know, if you're a herd of cows, eventually, eventually somebody else going to eat you. 
you know, you might keep it around for something or they're getting something from you, getting some milk or something, you know. Oh, hey, shoot. You're going to be cut up. Some, you know, somebody going to hit you on the head, cut you up, feed you to somebody on a higher level. And probably at the next two levels I'm going to talk about. Well, at least the next one. But that's the thing. Think about it. Think about it. Everybody listening to the sound of my voice. How much of what you do is just your own volition, but how much is it that you're doing because someone who's in the herd uh, did it before you did? Like most of us are doing stuff because the person in front of us did it because they set a tradition of following. Think about it. Think about it. How many people are practicing a spiritual tradition that because they actually studied and, you know, made a conscious decision to say, hey, this is what I'm going to study. But they did it because their parents and the people around them were doing the same thing. You'll find that with a life. You actually ask somebody why they doing something. It's like, well, why are you really doing this? Why are you going here? Have you really thought this through? And like I said, I ain't jumping on anybody's case. I was there. <laughs> because one thing about being a part of the herd, it don't matter about your IQ quotient or how educated you are. In fact... The more formally educated somebody is, the more likely they are to follow the herd. Because education at its base, and especially in this culture, is really just indoctrination into the culture. That's why if you look at education, everything is an indoctrination. I'll give you an example. Knowing the history of the United States, even though that's a required class probably in every high school, private school, that's not, I mean, that's cool to know. That's good to know, I mean, but... How many people talk about that history when they on some uh, manufacturing job? They manufacturing bicycles. All they really need to know is how to manufacture that easily, or cars, or, or if they're in a food creating factory or something. That's all they really need to know. But knowing the history of the country, it don't have anything to do with patriotism. It's part of the whole propaganda thing. You know, it's something really you could study. I mean, and I'm saying this as a history major. <laughs> so, I mean, but, you know, most of it is propaganda. It doesn't teach you to think. It keeps you in the herd. It keeps you thinking the same way because part of the herd mentality is thinking the same way. In order for society to be governed properly and to keep order, people have to have, be on the same general page. That's why there's so much of a fight against uh, different spiritual expressions. Because people have been taught to think this is the way. In any culture, any culture will have a dominant religion. Even though, in, ironically, even in the U.S., even though it's the most, uh, uh, has the most religious uh, plurality of any place in the world, it's still a dominant religion here. But that's part of people keeping them in the herd. Or the, uh, um, if you look at the news, or the media is basically promote certain ideas. And in fact, when somebody probably from the next two groups are doing something, that's usually to change the, the direction of the herd. And, um, and, you know, just to be clear, though, if you're a part of the herd, you recognize it. Congratulations, you're on the path to really waking up and really becoming a part of the next two groups. You, you on the path. You on the path to be getting out of the matrix. Congratulations, but don't have any shame in where you're at. Because it's deeper, I mean, it's deep really down to a DNA level, like a actual DNA level. Because the herd also uh, has an impact on who you're going to mate with, who you have children with. Because even society, what does society say? You have to be married. You have to have a family. And then once you have that family, you have to go get a house. You got to go get a house or residence or something to raise that family in. You know, so that that has an effect on the economy. You got to have you got to put stuff in that house, get a TV for that house, get a car to get around. <laughs> y'all see y'all see where I'm going. All of it's a part of it. Now, of course, everybody say, oh, this is normal. But really think in terms of your motivation for doing something. Think about it. How much of it is your own volition and how much is you just following the crowd? Now, this is it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Like I said, and it's deep. Even some people who think they're at a higher level, they're not. And, and let's just be clear. It don't mean that you're not thinking. 
that thinking, but you're not thinking. A lot of times we do stuff and then we think about why we actually doing it. And like I said, I've been there. I want to make that abundantly clear. I've been there. Most people, I haven't met anybody who hasn't been there. Even some people who made it into the next two groups. I haven't yet to meet somebody who hasn't at least been there. So anyway, that's it for now. Think on this. Peace.